It's not very humble for us to say, but we did disrupt the online form space, you know. We disrupted that by changing the way that people do that. One question at a time, more conversational language, it worked. And we were obsessive about bringing the questioner and the respondent closer together. And we call this conversational data collection. And if we just stop now and think, oh great, we've done a good job, you know, we've changed the way people collect information online, we won't be here tomorrow. We are like on daily basis producing stuff, but I think on the outside, it doesn't look like we're doing much. It's like we are putting people on people and it doesn't feel we are evolving at the same pace. In product especially, we've been pretty complacent over the last few years that we haven't been shipping enough value to users. And there's a massive opportunity ahead of us and we have to just take the opportunity. And it's not just going to happen by us just like sitting back and letting it happen. We really have to focus, we really have to go after it. What's the next step then? Uh, so we yep. take a look at the designs this week and then... We do like a sizing and get the work. We, we should do this exact same process we followed to estimate the rest of the things. So we're ready to help as soon as we... When I joined Typeform, goal. there was already a project. It wasn't called V2 back then. And it was born out of the idea that it should be much easier to create a form. The V2 is a project that's been going on since, you know, at least 400 years ago. So it's, it's something we have to complete. And it's a big blocker for us. Have you ever been in a meeting and somebody told you an idea, a beautiful idea, and somebody said, look, let's wait until V2 is out of the door? It felt like a constant justification in the organization. We could do so much, but at the end there is this V2 blocking the whole organization. There are also doubts, you know, how much are we going to invest in this? Is this going to bring money? You know, what are we doing? You know, is it necessary? Everyone says, oh, we're going to launch it one day, but we don't really know when. I think nobody imagined that V2 was going to take so much time. This, when it's mixed with an organization that is hyper-growing, creates a lot of pain. When we were 20 people in one room building a product, it's much easier to work like this. And there's a much lower level of coordination. And I can just shout, hey, Mark, how's this and that thing going? And he tells me, oh, yeah, I'll be probably be done tomorrow. And that's fine, because, like, Mark will probably be done tomorrow. That type of communication doesn't happen anymore when you're at like 160 people. It's much harder when you're bigger because it's just harder to change the course. And so what you sacrifice is a little bit of agility and I think also a little bit of that personal connection. What I miss is like just sitting down with David and discussing stuff and actually having more impact. Like, okay, so we will want to do this and then we actually do it soon, fast. Now it's everything is like a process. You just feel sometimes there's so much effort just put in the process instead of actually doing stuff. So I think that part is a bit not frustrating, it's just different, like you have to get used to it. We're creative people that were running small design web agencies. There was no processes, there was no organization. It was just like do the work and that's it. My natural disposition is to be more of a doer than a manager. And as the company has scaled, I've had to become less of a doer maker and more of a manager kind of leader. And I miss that, but you know, I can't be in every detail and you know, lead this company with Robert. So that's just a natural thing that I've you know, come to accept. Although it's not easy, that's for sure. At the point when we started B2, we were probably around 50 people and then we grow to 150 people. Uh, this is a lot for a very young organization. So it created a lot of ambiguity, and I think people got unmotivated because they, they didn't know what game we were playing. And David and I took the call to say, look, the whole organization needs to get behind this. We do it as soon as possible, but if we don't do it, it's gonna be kind of a ghost. We need to kill it. Arguably, we built the best form in the world. Okay, we built the best form in the world. <laughs> and we also built a very special organization. This is, by no doubt, a very special place. But we really need to leverage these two things. And basically, V2 is key to this.
The problem here is that nobody knows what's V2, what's the scope, and when are we going to release. As a company, we need to focus more in our strategies. And it's true to say that when we started V2, we didn't understood all the complexity. So what we want to do is to put full focus on V2. And I would like to ask you that you start thinking about V2 not as a side project. I would like to ask you that you start thinking as V2 as the company, as the new type form. That day, we started the journey of understanding what are the principles that we need to sustain to make sure that what we do will work for Typeform. Typeform has something really special, which is the fact that people has a voice here. It's a strong one. Let's talk to the teams. Like, it is really important at this stage that instead of the company saying, we want to go here by this date, it's more about starting this conversation with them. And it's a question, actually. It's, do you believe we can get there? Could you invest some time in looking at B2 and thinking what's missing to get there? And this is how the whole like regular review came in as an idea, like you know, a board where people can post questions and then we go and we answer them. Making teams part of deciding it's something you don't see usually in organizations, but it's something we learn. It's super, super important. Automatically you generate and a spirit of, of commitment, and you start seeing people rallying behind the project. We went to the whole company and said, look, the teams believe that we can't have V2 by the end of the year, which was what we expected, but it looks like we could get it closer to the 12th of February, which was the date when we initially released Typhoon. Let's do it. I think we are getting there. So we're launching this in February. You just get shit done. Biggest thing that I feel we really had a lack with V2 was clearly agreed vision of what it's going to be. Like very clear direction and a set of boundaries around it. Since we put V2 as the main focus, we started to give a lot of clarity. If you have a very clearly defined goal that you're trying to achieve, plus you're operating within constraints, and those constraints are clear and understood, then that will actually help you to rally and to focus and, and to get the job done. And that's really been the big thing here. Nice. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday. Uh, four more stand-ups to go until the big day. So, shall we start with the biggest post-it on the board? <laughs> Defining these limits, these boundaries together, made the teams feel really excited about it because they felt reconnected to a purpose. Imagine that you have been there for a while with nobody close to you saying you should be working on this or this is the direction. And they went from that to having David sitting with them, analyzing their problems and looking for a common direction. The success is really about making Typhoon feel small again and that was one of the things that we were looking for. Six months ago, David and I, we announced that we wanted to release V2 on the 12th of February 2018. Today is Monday, 12th of February 2018. We are here about to celebrate the official launch of V2.